good.
right, good morning and welcome to the Home of Christ Church in Cupertino. Uh, we're so glad you're here worshiping with us today. Uh, we really only have one announcement before we begin our service today, which is uh, if you're here with us in person, please uh, check in. Uh, there's a QR code here up on the screen. Um, if you've been with us before, you probably have this saved as a bookmark on your phone. But uh, yeah, please check in. It allows us to um, notify you if um, we've had like a COVID uh, incident here at church. And so yeah, take, take a minute or two to do that and uh, we'll begin our worship service together. Good morning, everybody. Um, would you stand with us and join us in praising our God together? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name, sing like never. Oh, 
worship your holy name. I'll worship your holy name. Before you guys sit down, we have another question for you as we try to uh, figure out how to get to know this church family. So everybody, look at your name tag. See the name you have? I want you to find two other people with the same color. All right? Go and find two other people with the same color. Um, actually, Grace, do you mind turning on the lights? Introduce yourself. Uh, if you're in school, what school do you go to? If you're working, um, welcome, Mac Eugenia. You made it just in time. Find two people with the same color, preferably people you don't know. All right, preferably somebody you don't know. <coughs> Kevin Sherman. <coughs> All right, once you, once you have introduced yourself, please, if you're still introducing yourself, continue to uh, introduce yourself. I want you to answer this one question. Um, many of you know, you're familiar with the hashtag blessed, but what good gifts have you received from God this past week? Right? What good gifts have you received from God 
this past week? Does the question make sense? Yeah?
man. I'm putting you on the spot. I gotta think. Hey, hey um, hopefully you guys are close to being done. Uh, please find a seat. Hope, you know, I hope this was enjoyable. We're going to be doing this every week until through the end of this year. Part of it is because you know, we're just learning what it means to be a church family again uh, and learning how to talk and integrate with each other. And um, Elder Chung is now going to bring us God's word. Thank you, Pastor Dean. All right. Um, if you are just joining us, I think there's a slide here for checking in. And if you haven't done so yet, um, there's a QR code. Um, it pulls up a form for you to just enter your contact information so that if we have a COVID incident, we can uh, send out a notification uh, to let you know. Um, yep. And uh, next, let's see. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. OK. Um, if you're just joining us, we are part of doing, doing a series on the Psalms throughout this entire year. It's been such a pleasure to be able to um, just read. Honestly, it feels like a soundtrack of, of, of God's people through, throughout time. And um, yeah, I, I've really been enjoying it, and I hope you have been too. Uh, we have this version uh, Bible reading plan. Uh, if you download the version Bible app, you can just search for Psalms window to our souls. And you can create your own little Bible reading plan. If you, don't, if you want to join someone else, you can join mine. Um, and it's five psalms a, a day. And there's some really neat uh, devotionals that were written by members of this church. And so uh, I encourage you to check that out, um, to join us uh, as we read through what God's Word together. And um, well, I guess that, that was the last announcement. OK, so here we go. Um, I'm going to start today's uh, message just by asking a question. Um, what do you do? when someone gives you a gift? Maybe say, say thank you? What if it's like this really more extravagant kind of gift, or like a gift that you knew took a lot of thought, or knew, knew that it was kind of more valuable? So you get a little bit more tricky? You feel a little bit more pressure, maybe? Um, I feel like in our society we have like all of, we're, we're kind of a gift-giving society. I'm really bad at giving gifts. I'm probably even worse at receiving gifts. Have you ever been in a situation where perhaps like you get a gift and you're not sure what to say? Um, I mean, it kind of gets complicated, right? Because if someone gives you a gift and you weren't expecting one or you didn't want this gift, like what are you supposed to say or how do you say it in a way that um, doesn't offend the other person, right? Um, have you ever been in a situation where there, there's a person, or maybe it might be you, who prefers to open gifts in private why is that? Why doesn't it seem a little strange? It seems a little strange to me, but I know people who used to, who prefer doing that because they don't want the the scrutiny of like them knowing uh, them knowing like what what the you know the giver seeing their reaction when they open those gifts. And um, or if you have you ever been in a situation where you give someone a gift and then right away they give you back a gift, or right away they give you a, a gift that's even bigger, and it kind of goes back and forth, and you've got like this gift giving's arms race. Um, what's at play at the, in, in those situations? I think that even though it seems like a very simple, mono, uh, maybe kind of a, an everyday kind of thing, I think there's something kind of uh, important, something uh, more profound that's uh, hiding within our emotions, within our psyche that's in there. Um, and so, uh, yeah, you, I, I also put fighting over the check. I think that's something that all of us have either participated in or seen our parents do uh, at the end of a dinner. And so I think there's also something at play going on there. So we're going to talk a lot about receiving gifts today, not so much about giving gifts. And I promise you this has something to do with uh, the song that we're going to talk about today. Um, uh, so. Let's just talk really briefly about what makes a good gift receiver. It's kind of a strange question, right? Because we often talk about giving good gifts um, or how to give a good gift. But um, one of the things I would wager would be to show appreciation, right? To show somehow dig it deep within you, to show genuine, um, genuine gratitude, right? Um, I think it requires a little bit of work because um, it requires you to be a little bit vulnerable, right? You have to kind of dig within your, within your feelings, get in touch with your feelings, and maybe 
reflect back and say, oh, this gift meant a lot to me because you're important to me, or I can see all the thought and all of the, um, all the thought that you put into giving me this gift. Um, another, another thing might be that um, giving a, uh, re receiving a, a gift well means that you have to kind of humble yourself in some way, right? Because in some form, or whether the gift is large or small, um, you kind of have to humble yourself and be slightly or greatly indebted to this other person. So I think that's what makes receiving gifts sometimes a, a little uncomfortable for, for us. Um, today we're going to be um, taking a look at this phrase, what does it mean to bless the Lord? So we just sang a song, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, right? Um, and I'm going to wager that hopefully today you're going to learn a little bit more about what this means. I'm going to give you a brief definition of what I think it can mean. And uh, we're going to kind of get more into it. So I think just from a, a really kind of a cursory point of view, bless the Lord means thanking him for every good gift. And so um, today we're going to read the psalm together. Um, and in the spirit of that, I just wanted to kind of remind uh, us all that the psalms were songs. Uh, and and it, the word psalm comes from the Greek word psalmos in it means song accompanied by string instrument. You can imagine like someone singing this out loud as a solo or in a corporate uh, group. And uh, in the, the Hebrew word means songs of praise. And so in all forms, it's, it's something that meant to be sung out loud. I often think of like reading the Psalms like in my, the private of my study. I don't have a study. Uh, or like, you know, like secretly kind of like praying through the Psalms. But these are songs that were meant to be sung together, more like hymns. And so kind of in that spirit, um, I'm going to ask us all, even if you're online, to kind of stand if you're able to, and we're going to read the psalm together, uh, and hopefully uh, we'll be able to worship God um, through reading uh, this word together. All right? So uh, actually, I can't read that sideways, but <laughs> I'm going to come down here a little bit. Uh, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, and who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. He knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass, he flourishes like a flower of the field, for the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting, on those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his commandments, and those of his commandments. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, O his angels, you mighty ones who do his word, obeying the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers who do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord. All right. So, oh my soul. Thank you. You may be seated. Uh, I'm going to begin with a word of prayer, and uh, we'll kind of launch into this uh, message together. Uh, Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this opportunity to uh, share God's word with um, our church. And I pray that uh, as we come together um, and 
and listen to your word, that you would uh, soften our hearts and allow us to be open to what you might be saying. I pray that uh, um, you would make us more aware, more uh, appreciative of all the things that you've done in our lives. And um, Lord, may our time of worship, may our time of listening to your word, may these songs that we sing be an offering that is pleasing unto you. And so we thank you, Lord. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, so I'm going to give you a, a brief overview um, now that we've kind of read through this um, 22 verses or so, just to give you a, a deeper appreciation for what we're looking at here. Yeah, Psalm 103 um, includes what I guess we would call, some people call framing or bookends. Um, it begins, the first line is the exact same uh, line as the last line, bless the Lord, O my soul. Um, some people like, it's just like a, a picture frame kind of is there to enhance what is in the middle of the picture. Um, this is a Hebrew literary device that also is meant to enhance what is in the middle of the, these, the, the bookends. And so uh, in the middle of our psalm here is this uh, big tasty Thanksgiving sandwich. Um, and so uh, another thing that you might see is that it begins with bless the Lord, right? Bless the Lord, O my soul. And it says that twice at the beginning. And then at the end, it says it four times in a row. And uh, I would say that repetition is a, a common way to emphasize your point, right? A repetition is a common way to emphasize your point. It works both in, uh, in Hebrew and English. And so if you're still wondering, what is this psalm about? It's about blessing the Lord. Um, and then finally, uh, my last remark, if I just about the overview of what we're looking at today, is the general shape. Uh, I'm just going to point this out, that in the very beginning, in the first five verses, it talks about, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. And in the, in the middle, where it talks about uh, between verses 6 through 18 or so, it, it says, it kind of shifts. It shifts to um, a call to, to blessing the Lord for, to all of Israel to, as, in a corporate way. And so it says, repay us. Do, God does not repay us according to our sins. And then finally, in the last four or five verses or so, it shifts yet again to all of creation. Another example of that says, Bless the Lord, all his works, in all the places of his dominion, bless the Lord. So let's take a quick look at what, what does it mean to, to bless the Lord. I kind of offered um, the first one, which means to thank, right? Um, but in reality, it is a little strange, right, when, it's, when we say bless the Lord, because it's God who blesses us, is it not? And it's, and so in the Bible, you'll see kind of two contexts of, uh, of this word bless. And the, one, the first one you're more familiar with, where it's like God creates the, the heavens and the earth, and he creates the world, and he blesses it. And he says, um, be fruitful and multiply. God is the giver now, it's in that context. And the second is what we see here in Psalm 103, where it's the gift receiver who's doing the blessing. And um, I think um, the, the Hebrew word that... Um, I don't actually know how to pronounce. I think it's barak. It comes from this word that means to kneel. And from that, we kind of get the sense uh, of sort of how this came to be, where it's kind of this reciprocal or twofold kind of meaning, where one person gives a gift, and the other who receives the gift kind of kneels in appreciation, acknowledging the gift giver, acknowledging the gift. Uh, it also means to give praise or to offer acts of adoration. Um, and so the Psalm 103, it translated in the NIV, actually, it doesn't say bless the Lord, it says praise the Lord. So you, this word bless can also mean to praise. Um, the other th example that I wanted to just show, because I thought it highlighted the, the, um, the difference or the other meaning that, that, that we often see, is in Luke 2430, this is um, Jesus' uh, is, uh, is, is breaking bread with the, um, the two disciples he met on the, the road to Emmaus after his resurrection. And it says here, when he was at table with them, he took the bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And so that's that, um, that's that same kind of meaning, blessing, saying a blessing over um, when we're, when we're going to eat before, we, before we're eating. And then the NIV translates that to gave thanks. And so here we have um, so, sort of like a twofold meaning of the word. When you're a gift receiver, and you bless someone for the gift, it's because you are giving thanks, one, or you are, um, 
or the other is that you're offering praise or act, uh, offering acts of adoration. Why should we bless the Lord? I think this part's the, uh, the most inter interesting part to, to me. Um, I'll begin with just this verse from Psalm 33, 1, which I thought was pretty puzzling uh, when I first read it. And it says, Shall for joy in the Lord, O you righteous, praise befit, for praise befits the upright. And um, what I thought was interesting about this verse was that it says that praise befits the upright. Why does praise or, or thanksgiving, why does, that, why does that befit, why is it fitting for those who are righteous to praise the Lord? And I think for one, for one, one reason is it, that when we praise the Lord, it shifts our worldly perspective, all the things that we're worried about, all the things that we're caught up with in our, in our lives into an eternal perspective, right? It reframes our thoughts. It reframes um, all, of our, all, all of our woes and all of the things that are going on in our lives, all of our complaints into that which is eternal, all the things that are really, really true. Um, and, I, and lastly, one of the reasons why I think praising or blessing the Lord is, is important is that it heals our soul in, in some way. It reminds us that though we are going through a tribulation, uh, it, would be, it, it is temporal. It is something that um, will be healed in, in the grand scope of time in that we have a God who loves us, who has shown us um, how much he loves us and has given us every gift that we possibly could need. But there are challenges, are there not, um, to blessing the Lord? There are times where we just don't feel like it. There are times when it feels a little awkward or it feels, I don't know, just sometimes when, we, when the words are, are hard to find or hard to say. And so what are some of those, these challenges to blessing the Lord? Um, we look at verse 2 in Psalm 103. Um, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Uh, forget not all his benefits. And I highlighted forget not all his benefits because I thought it probably would have been easier just to say remember all of his blessings. That seems to make more sense, right? But I think in there, <laughs> you see a picture of the golden calf. Um, I think it's a, it's a stark reminder. Uh, it's a stark, almost a warning to us of the ways in which we as, uh, as human beings, the human heart, often forgets um, God's blessings. And so, uh, I think this is a, a, it, it, it's a, it's a hyperlink. It points us to the time at which when God had just re rescued Israel out of Egypt, out of slavery, and he had performed the ten plagues, these miraculous signs of his power, and he had pulled them through um, the Red Sea, parting water on either side. And as Moses was on Mount Sinai talking to God, the people said, oh, where is this Moses guy? He's been gone for a long time. We think he's delayed. And, is, and, and Aaron... His brother says, oh, um, why don't you give me all your gold? And then he makes this golden calf, right? And he says, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you out of Egypt. To me, that's such a surprising statement because, wait a second, how did we get here? W where did we just come from? And yet at the same time, um, is it not, is that not us? Is that not the way uh, in which our heart, own hearts behave? When we receive something from someone, we just want, 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 want. We're never satisfied. And uh, I think um, this reminds us that, um, that we, we ought to count our blessings. We ought to remember all the way, ways in which God has, has given us um, every blessing in Christ that we could possibly need. Um, and I think another reason why it's difficult to bless the Lord sometimes is because it reminds us of our indebtedness. It kind of, kind of attacks our pride, does it not? It kind of makes me feel like I'm not self-sufficient or I need someone else, which is an uncomfortable thing to, to talk about or an uncomfortable feeling to kind of tap into. Um, yeah, I, I think in general the Bible really does kind of talk and speak to our indebtedness. And maybe this doesn't, I mean, I don't know. I'm just going to kind of run through a couple of verses with us together here, but... What does it say? In Exodus 20, 12, this is the Ten Commandments. Uh, Honor your father and your mother that your days may go long in the land. And so I kind of think that this is here because it reminds us that, hey, you didn't come from nowhere. 
even though your debt to your parents isn't like this crushing debt or like this really overly oppressive debt, it, it's asking you to honor them, right? To realize that, hey, without them, you wouldn't be here. So be thankful, you know? Um, another example comes from Matthew 6. This is the Lord's Prayer. And um, I think here it also kind of shows our indebtedness and says, when, we, when it says, forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. And so here it almost, here it kind of implies that your forgiveness um, is dependent on your ability or your willingness to forgive those who have wronged you. And so in that sense, um, we are very much indebted, are we not? I think it, that also makes us pre feel pretty uncomfortable. Um, uh, later on in Matthew, Peter goes up to Jesus and he says, hey, how many times do I got to forgive my brother? Seven times enough? And Jesus responds to him, no, seven times 70, right? And then he goes into this parable about this unforgiving servant who's forgiven much but refuses to forgive someone else who owes him much, a far smaller debt. Um, yeah, so I think I just go into this because I feel like um, how we respond to God's gifts, it matters. Um, it has a huge bearing on your relationship with your maker. And I think it, ref it grit in... in, in, in well, in small words, I would say that it reflects the state of your heart. It reflects whether or not you really appreciate the gifts that you've been given. It, it really um, reflects upon whether or not um, you understand and whether or not um, you've really accepted and taken on these gifts um, into your own life and whether or not you are now um, in the business of um, wanting to bless other people in the same way. So the last little bit I want to talk about really is just to get practical. Like, how can we bless the Lord? And uh, I'm going to break this up into three categories. Um, it is, uh, I would say, we can bless the Lord with our words, uh, with our thoughts, and with our deeds. And I'll give you a couple of examples of what I mean by each. Um, so giving thanks uh, with our words is, is the first one. And so... Um, remember what God has done. Um, and so I'm going to point you back to the, um, Psalm 103. Uh, verses 3 through 5 have like this really cool um, series of five benefits. Uh, it says here, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, and who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagle's. And I highlighted some of those actions. They're good examples for things that you could um, bless the Lord for, that you could give thanks to the Lord for. Um, I just love the lavish language here, um, don't you? Who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases. Um, you might be thinking, well, that's pretty artistic. Maybe there's, he's taking a lot of artistic license with all your iniquity, all your diseases. The author of this psalm was King David, was it not? And I can think of a time when I remember there was a bit of iniquity and disease in his life. And what comes to my mind is the time when he stole Bathsheba from Uriah the Hittite. And um, they had a, he killed her, Uriah, and when they had their first child together, that child got sick and uh, eventually died. And so I, would feel, I could say that King David may have experienced disease in his life that wasn't healed. And, um, and that's the reason why I just kind of feel like I needed, uh, I want to just kind of add that when we read some of these Psalms, the first layer can certainly be the, the past, what God has done for you in the past and what he's doing for you in the present, but also what God is going to do for you in the future. And there's this element of faith, this, this element of kind of an eternal perspective that David has when he's writing and penning um, these words. And yeah, I just feel like there's just such beauty within, within the words here. Um, when the child finally dies and he, David <coughs> dresses himself, he cleans himself up and he starts eating, his servants get really, they're like, what's going on? Why, why are you doing this? And he, he responds to them saying, is this child going to come back to me? Uh, no, but I will go to him. And so we can see in some ways that um, David has in his mind um, the eternal kind of redeeming of, uh, of our physical bodies. And so, yeah, uh, I just thought I would point that out to you guys. Um, yeah, the, the other way um, that we can um, pray, uh, or 
bless the Lord through our words is by praising God. Um, you know, offer us, Psalm 103 is a song of praise, is it not? And we can declare what God has done um, in the past. Uh, we can extol, extol is a big word for um, praise, I guess, uh, to worship God. Um, extol God's character. And so you'll see that in verses 6 through 18. Um, I'm also just going to kind of walk through these verses a little by little just to kind of um, give us um, time um, just kind of to let God's word kind of simmer in our hearts. And so the, uh, the words here say, The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who were oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. I try to highlight some stuff here, but I, I can't really see it. But it might be because I'm just colorblind or it may not have worked. But what I wanted to, to point out is like the, the, the line that says here, it says uh, righteousness and justice for all who were oppressed. And to me, that kind of points, it's like a hyperlink to Israel's time in, in Egypt, is it not? They were the ones who were oppressed. And then this next line here, it says, like, he made his ways known to Moses and his acts to the people of Israel. That definitely grounds it in the, in the Exodus because immediately our mind thinks about, oh, the plagues, oh, the ways in which God used miracles to save his people and the ways in which the miracles that he, he used to provide for his people in the wilderness. And then this next, the next verse that, that follows is, um, it's almost, if it seems familiar, it, it probably is because you've read something very similar to this on a number of occasions. The Lord is merciful and gracious. Um, these are the f almost word for word uh, God's own description of himself from Exodus 34, 6 and 7. Um, so after the golden calf, uh, what happens? Uh, I think Moses takes those two tablets, right? And he shatters, he breaks them, right? And then we have the Ten Commandments given to Moses again. So this is, part, uh, this is kind of take two. And God, as he's giving him um, these tablets, he reveals to him his character. And he says, the Lord, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. And so this part, this poem leaves out faithfulness, um, probably for literary, re uh, like poetic reasons to kind of pair up, you know, the, 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 t um, the four attributes with one another. And um, yeah, so I think with our thought, I mean, with, with our words, we can praise the Lord, we can praise him for his attributes, we can praise him for who he is and what he has done in our lives. Um, Psalm 103 is a, is a great example of what that is, what that looks like. Um, the next couple of verses, um, again, are, are, are all um, praises. And here, he kind of go, starts with just Exodus 34, 6, and he kind of launches into the, like, he really is just, I, can't, I think it's really hard, it might be kind of hard to find words within the Bible that describe God's character in a more poetic, more beautiful way, right? Um, I do see my highlights here. It says, he will not always chide, nor keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us to our, our account, iniquities. There's like these four negatives, right? And they're kind of short, and they kind of highlight how the, the scary parts of God, you know, God's anger, God's chastising, God's ch chiding, they're all short. They're all temporary, right? And that gets contrasted in the next couple of verses, right? For as high as the heavens. So this is as really as high as possibly can be. Um, so is God's steadfast love to those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, as far as, far as possible, right? So far does he remove his transgressions from us. And so, so on and so forth. Let's see. Um, I've already made, made you guys read this all already once. So, to those who keep his covenants and remember to do his commandments. All right. And so I'm going to move on to our next section here, which is to how do we bless the Lord with our thoughts? Um, one is to meditate on God's word. And so here I kind of feel in some ways maybe this psalm was born out of David meditating on God's word, was it not? We see here in Exodus, the, in verse 8, that almost direct quotation from Exodus 34, 6. When we meditate on God's word, it's one way that we can give him thanks. Uh, in one way in which we can praise him and worship him. Another way that we can um, bless the Lord um, through our thoughts is by trusting in him. And so um, we can see that David trusts in the Lord for his salvation, for, um, for his 
for the removal of his sins. And we also can see how he trusts that God will bless him in the future and into all eternity. And this trust, I think, is something that honors God, right? It says that, Lord, I know that you love me. I know that um, you intend to do good for me, uh, that you are a good God. And um, that attitude of trust is one that honors our Lord. And in the last uh, idea that I had, uh, example, I guess, for blessing the Lord with our thoughts was to delight in God. And um, yeah, I feel like such a beautiful poem of praise that David, you can see, he truly delights in the Lord. And when you enjoy God, when you enjoy his presence, it's a, a wonderful way to, to bless God, to, to, to bless God with um, your thoughts. Um, when you spend time in his word, when you spend time in prayer, um, just thinking upon God, delighting in what he's created is a way that honors um, our Father. And then lastly, I just wanted to give you s some practical ideas for how we can bless the Lord with our deeds. Um, so for one, obeying, obeying his commandments. Um, when we do what God asks us to do, we, we are worshiping him, right? And we are praising him, we are blessing him. We show that we love him. And, um, and two, other, uh, two other aspects, I believe, of God's character, I feel like when we mimic or when we um, embody um, also are a blessing to, to our God. When we show generosity, uh, we are blessing God. Do we, do we trust God with what he's given to us? Are we good stewards of um, whatever it is that he's given us, whether it be our time, our relationship, our family, um, our money? Do we tithe regularly? Um, those, are, those are all signs and ways in which um, you can bless. You can bless the Lord with your, with your deeds. And um, this last one I, I included was, do I protect those who are most vulnerable around us? And um, yeah, I, I feel like God's heart for the poor, God's heart for like the widow, the orphans and the refugees is something that we see all throughout the Bible. And uh, when, we, um, when we embrace God's heart for the weak, for those who are unable to defend themselves, um, that is an important, uh, significant way in which uh, we exhibit God's love and we embrace as well as we reflect God's love towards us. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to wrap up um, this time um, just by kind of stepping out of David's shoes, right? This psalm was written by David. Um, um, he, was, he was a faithful, faithful king, um, someone that God loved deeply. Um, and so we could see just how beautiful these words really are, right? But uh, if we step out of his shoes and we kind of walk forward a, a thousand years or so, a son of David, uh, a son of God who was born, um, God sent into the world. And um, he was one who freely forgave sin. Um, and he healed all kinds of diseases. And he even brought a man back from the dead. And um, we saw him feed 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and, and two fish and dying on the cross on Calvary. Um, the temple curtain, uh, which divided men and God, was torn in two. And resurrecting on the third day, he conquered uh, sin and death. And so I just want to say that uh, we've been even more lavishly blessed than um, the author of this beautiful, beautiful psalm. We have even more reason, more compelling reasons even, to sing and to and to, and to praise and to bless God for. And so I just want to encourage you, um, encourage me, us all, that um, we should, let's be people who realize the incredible gifts that we've been given in Christ um, and to be able to respond in kind by blessing our God. And so, um, yeah, thank you for listening. Uh, I just want to close this in a word of prayer. Let's pray. Uh, Lord, I thank you so much for um, giving us um, this Sunday where we can worship you together. And I pray that as we, um, yeah, take this Sunday to, to, to Sabbath, to, to rest, uh, Lord, help us to rest in you. Help us to realize that um, we don't have to do anything. Um, all of that we need to do, we've been given. Um, you are the great gift, gift giver. and. Uh, um, yeah, Lord, I pray that you would just bless us. Help us to really understand that um, 
you are, um, you are everything that we need. Um, I pray, Lord, um, just through Ephesians, um, Paul's prayer, um, that uh, for this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, uh, that according to the riches of his glory that he may grant you to be strengthened with power through the Spirit and in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded of love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, length, and depth, and height, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Um, yeah, amen. Um, we're going to do something a little different during our offering time today. I wanted to share a song. It's actually Psalm 103. Uh, poor Bishop Hooper, um, a duo, a Christian um, duo, uh, music duo, have put together this um, project that's called the Psalms Project. And essentially, they've taken the Psalms, all of them, all 150, and put them to music. And for me, it's been a blessing to be able to, to listen to God's Word with music, because I think... The music is kind of what makes it continue to ring in our hearts, makes it, it allows us to, the words to kind of sing and soar within our hearts. And so um, take the time during this um, offering to meditate on Psalm 103, uh, to listen as well as to worship, to give thanks um, to God for all the blessings, small, great, um, and large um, in your life. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul, let all that's within me bless the Lord. Don't forget his benefits, who forgives all your sin, who heals your diseases and pulls you up from the pit, who crowns with loving kindness and compassion who satisfies who oh, satisfies you slow to anger and abounding in love he hasn't dealt with our offense as our sins would deserve for as high as the heavens are above the earth so great for those who fear him, bless the Lord, oh my soul, let all that's within me, bless the Lord, oh bless the Lord, oh my soul, let all that's within me, bless the As a father has compassion on his children So the Lord has compassion on those who fear him As far as east is from the west He's removed our sin For his love is everlasting, everlasting, everlasting Oh, bless the Lord As for man, his days are grass, like a flower that's gone when the wind has passed. But the loving kindness of the Lord goes on, everlasting for those who fear him and his righteousness. To children's children, 
For those who keep his covenant, obey his commandments, the Lord has established his throne in heaven. Bless the Lord, his angels and his hosts. within me bless the Lord bless the Lord oh my soul let all that's within me bless the Lord let all that's within me bless the Lord two songs. Oh, 
praise His name forevermore, for endless days. We will sing Your praise, O Lord, O Lord our God. God from whom 
is Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Stay standing for the benediction. Um, now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Have a good Sunday. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Let all that's within me bless the Lord. Don't forget his benefits, who forgives all your sin, who heals your diseases and pulls you up from the pit, who crowns with loving kindness and compassion. Who satisfies, oh, satisfies you. Slow to anger and abounding in love. He hasn't dealt with our offense as our sins would deserve. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is love. For those who fear him, bless the Lord, oh my soul, let all that's within me, bless the Lord, oh bless the Lord, oh my soul, let all that's within me, bless the Lord. As a father has compassion on his children So the Lord has compassion on those who fear him As far as east is from the west He's removed our sin For his love is everlasting, everlasting, everlasting Oh, bless the Lord As for man, his days are grass, like a flower that's gone when the wind has passed. But the loving kindness of the Lord goes on, everlasting for those who fear him and his righteousness. To children's children, for those who keep his covenant, obey his commandments. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. Bless the Lord, his angels and his hosts. With them, bless the within me bless the lord 
and bless the Lord, O oh, my soul. Let all that's within me bless the Lord. Let all that's within me bless the Lord.